The opinions expressed on the ACB Media Network are those of the content providers and should not be viewed as an endorsement of any product or service. Nor does it reflect the views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. And top of the morning to you, or top of the afternoon, I guess that's what you say, or middle of the afternoon, or good evening whenever you're listening to this. Welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner. My name is Herbie Allen, and I am joined as always by my wonderful co-facilitator, Tori. Hello, people. And today we are going to do a very interesting recipe, and I've never done this before, but I decided to use you all as a uh, test bed, and that is going to be baked sweet and sour chicken. By the way, I forgot to give the date for this call. It is August 30th, 2022. Wow, where has the time gone? So the overall time for today's call was booked for two hours. I have a feeling we're not going to need that entire time. But then again, with how chatty things get between Tori and myself, you never know. And the chicken itself is supposed to take about an hour to cook. But, um, we'll see. And what you hear with the oven noises right now is actually not that chicken cooking. It's some other chicken cooking because we've got members of the household that want their breakfast right away. So we're going to be doing baked sweet and sour chicken along with rice. This is definitely going to be fun because it has been a long time since I actually have attempted to cook rice. And uh, But that's okay because my co-facilitator has, so I will just uh, bow to her expertise. And I know this is music to her ears. <laughs> okay. But you've had more experience recently than I have. Let's put it, leave it at that. Okay, that one I'll agree with, but expert, no. Fair enough. Alright guys, so let's get things started. And the first thing we're going to need is chicken breast. So there's two components to this recipe. There's the chicken breast and then there's the sweet and sour sauce. And in order to get things started, what we have to do is cube our chicken breast. Not dice, not uh, whatever, but it says to cube it. Now, I, we're not going to be precise precise with our cubing. We just want something that um, you know, it's cut into small enough pieces that we can fry and then bake. And the question, of course, is always going to come up, okay, chicken breasts. Why chicken breasts as opposed to uh, chicken thighs? Well, great question. And in my case, the simple reason is that uh, chicken breasts are a lot easier to cut. However, I actually ended up getting out the chicken thighs instead. So I guess that's what we'll be having. I don't feel like bagging them back up and putting in... I don't think the it really thing. matters. Most people specify chicken breast, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, and it does. Where it matters is, like, the reason why I like to personally prefer chicken thighs is for the taste. They have, because they're dark meat, they have a better taste to them. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, whichever your preference is fine is what I mean. It doesn't matter yes. for the recipe. No, for the recipe it does not. Like I said, the only disadvantage is sometimes thighs can be harder to cut because they are a little bit more stringy, but that's okay. We will make the most of it. So the way you can tell it's a chicken thigh, like I said, it is a lot thinner than your chicken breast. It is also going to be a little bit more stringy. And either way, we're just going to take our knife and slice lengthwise. And then we're going to take the part that we just cut off and slice it again. And voila, we have a chicken cube. Two chicken cubes, as a matter of fact. Now, um, while I'm cutting the chicken here, I just got to briefly talk about something. So last week, after the call, I did get a chance to do Cindy's potato salad. And let me tell you, it is awesome. If you have not given that a try, you need to do so, like, right after this call. Because... It is very amazing. good. Now, very amazing, yes. But I'll tell you something else that is um, really interesting. The recipe, the mayonnaise part with the relish and all that actually reminds me a little bit of how you would make tartar sauce. Um, something I have done in the past, which is essentially mayo, rel dill relish, and uh, one or two other things I forget off the top of my head. But... Um, you know, it's very similar to a, a tartar sauce recipe when you factor in the dill relish. And um, there we go. So this is 
you know, like I said, the, the trickiest part of this recipe, well, not tricky for me because I know how to do this, is going to be, even though it's baked sweet and sour chicken, it's both fried and baked. And I got this particular recipe off of a Facebook post that my friend shared, and I'm forgetting where they originally got it from. Sorry, Facebook. I'll try to look that up a little bit later on if I get a chance because I do like to give people the proper credit, but um, also questions have come about how am I going to, you know, people want copies of the recipes afterwards. I've, you know, one idea I was given was a Google Docs. I may have actually come up with an idea that might be a little bit better and a little bit more permanent. So don't be surprised if I start experimenting with that. All right, as I'm cutting this chicken, do we have any questions so far? Jill, go ahead. I came in a little late. Are you cubing the chicken or what shape are you cutting those in? I am cutting it into cubes. They're not precise cubes, but they're cube enough for my liking. Oh, okay. Um, you know, yeah, I at, have to at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to cooking, I'm not worried about shape or presentation. I'm worried about one thing. How does it taste? And That's sometimes I need it to be... Exactly. So, I mean, you need it to be small enough to work with sometimes, but... Okay, I just wasn't <coughs> sure if you were making, like, strips or cubes. So nope, I am making cubes. Okay, As much as you, you can with thighs here, yep. Um, cubed, cubed, cubed. And, um, very good, very good. All right, anybody else before I continue lecturing? No, sir. <laughs> No, sir. Okay, good. No, well, sir. I'm about to burn leftovers here. And um, one of the things with cooking sometimes... No, we don't want to do that. Sometimes with cooking, you can be multitasking because maybe you're going to be making something that the other person doesn't like or thinks they won't like. And so this is just one of the hazards of cooking. So um, hopefully the biscuits Or maybe the other are... person just doesn't want to wait until an hour, an hour or more to have their breakfast. No. Actually, I was actually thinking the same. I'd be the same as myself. I thought I'd be up at six this morning and making a breakfast before I started this call. Okay, so where to set the hot pan when we're done? That's an interesting question itself, but we got that sorted out, and that's where we can also run some cold water over it when putting it in the sink. So here at the cooking corner, this is a real kitchen where we are multitasking, but if a certain wifey of mine would like to come and have her breakfast... Who's been up since 5.30 and waited till 8.30 to ask me to make her breakfast. So, um, isn't that love, wasn't guys? Wasn't that nice of that, her? Actually, it was, because it meant I didn't have to get up till, like, uh, 7.50, so. That's what I mean. She was really nice. She let you sleep in. She could have got you I up know. and said, I'm hungry now. She could have. you love such a considerate wife. Well, I could have just gone back to bed after I, you know, cooked it, because it's leftovers. I wasn't actually, um, but yes, very considerate. There we go. Thank so you. you're welcome. All right. So I'm going to make sure my oven is still on. And I got to tell you, this is a true story. It's rather embarrassing, but that makes sure you'll all be interested. The other day, we were going to have ranch chicken for dinner. So I put the chicken in the ranch mixture. I've done this recipe before, by the way, and it, that has been uploaded to my YouTube channel. Did the mixture, all that jazz, go to take it out of the oven only to discover that I didn't put it in the oven in the first place. So the pan was still sitting there to the side. I had the oven preheated and I didn't put it in. And then to top it all off when I put it in the oven, I'd forgotten that I turned the oven off thinking that I'd put it in the oven. So I was turning it off to take it out so we finally did have ranch chicken that turned out very good actually because you know I did finally realize my mistake and turn back on the oven but that is the type of thing that can sometimes happen in the Allen household but yeah you know, you know what it, it you know just goes to show that mistakes can definitely happen and they can happen to all of us you know what I'm just going to cube the rest of these thighs and we will have us a lot 
of chicken to go with the rice. If I didn't want to use up the rest of the thighs though, storing them wouldn't be a big deal at all. You can put them in a Ziploc bag. The tricky thing with that is making sure you don't touch the outside of the bag with the raw meat because you don't really want that stuff to be on there. If you do, then running it under uh, water would be a good idea. Now, another thing that this recipe tells us to do, which I personally don't agree with is it actually says to run your chicken breast under the water well these are thighs they don't need the water but you know if you're gonna put water to your chicken breast it's better to dip it because the one thing i have read recently is when you spray put raw meat in the sink like that it uh, a exposes your sink to germs and the water can also spray the stuff off of the raw meat in multiple directions. So I would not run it under water like the recipe says. And if you think it needs water, just get like a bowl of water and dip it in there instead before you go on with the rest. We are just cubing the chicken and I don't think I fully described the operation if I did or didn't. I do of course have the chicken on a cutting board. We definitely want that for a number of reasons. Mine are just, you know, the standard like plastic uh, cutting boards, nothing fancy or whatever. That's what we are working with. And what we're going to do is after we cube the chicken, I'm done cubing the chicken here, which um, you know, I'm doing safely. I've got my fingers apart, putting the knife in between them. We're going to then move on to our mixture and get that ready. And we're going to coat the chicken in that. We're going to fry it. And then we're going to do the sweet and sour sauce and dredge it in that before we bake it. And of course, I do want to mention that I did wash my hands when pausing to go deal with the uh, leftovers from the oven, you know, for obvious uh, reasons. I'm almost done with these thighs. I'm reminded of just why they're sometimes not as easy to uh, cut. And when you get to some of the stringier parts, what I will do is I'll use my fingers to break it apart. So Tori, let's talk real quick about you. And we've been talking about me a lot. I believe you are using tofu for this recipe. I am. I am using tofu, which while you were um, cutting up your chicken into cubes, I've cut up into cubes myself. I'm using firm tofu, which I pressed to get most of the liquid out because it will give a better texture for the recipe. You do not want to use silken tofu for a recipe like this. No. No, 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 you do not. Silken tofu would be for like your puddings and stuff like that. If for some reason you want a meat alternative and don't want to use tofu, you could use something like mushrooms. Though obviously the cooking time for the oven will be definitely shorter for that. But we'll get to the cooking time for the oven in a bit. That's an, uh, another option if you would rather not use tofu, but it's tofu that I'm using. All right. And then the, the interesting thing is when you get such a pile of chicken now, it can sometimes be hard to tell what you've cut and what you've not cut. So what I'm having to do is feel around in the pile. You know, when you get a big pile, stuff can get mixed in. And using my hands to kind of judge here, you do have to use a lot of handwork with recipes like this. So if you've not touched raw meat before, it is going to definitely be an interesting experience for you the first time. But... Uh, all I'm going to say on that is don't be afraid and you will get used to it and um, very good. And then of course just wash your hands constantly afterwards. All right, so now that uh, that is done, we are going to go take a look at our uh, recipe here and see what we have to do next. So we've got two sets of things. We have three sets of things really with the ingredients. We've got dry ingredients we have to mix together, then wet ingredients, and then our sweet and sour sauce. What we're going to need is salt and pepper, cornstarch. We're going to mix those in a bowl. And what we're going to do then is dredge the chicken into that mixture. It's actually gonna be interesting because we it, it actually says to season the chicken with the salt and pepper. So let's do that first. We're going to deal with our salt and pepper. And for that, the easiest way for me at least to do this is rather than doing it on the cutting board, we are going to get out a mixing bowl. 
one of the uh, bigger ones were my mixing bowls. Of course, when you want them and you think you know where they're at, there is one. All right. I'm missing the other one, but I don't need it. So what I'm going to do now is take the chicken with one hand and just plop it in the bowl. And I'm seeing some chicken that needs better cubing as I'm going along here. But I'm just kind of using my hands to fix that. And ugh, a couple pieces like to fall off the cutting board. So I'll just have to wipe the counter down, which I do anyway after doing something like this. So we're going to put all that there. Okay, now I'm going to take this cutting board, move it over to the sink, and we're going to wash up again and go on to our next part, which is have some water because I'm going to see if that will chase some of the frogs away. We do not like frogs when they're cooking, by the way. I do understand, though, some people do eat frog legs, but uh, you won't see we'll let them do that themselves and we'll skip it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> While I'm fishing up my water here, some announcements. I'm verifying that we'll be able to have our guest speaker on next week, Dorlin who uh, asked if she could talk about transitioning from being a sighted cook to a blind cook. And that's going to be interesting, especially since our co-facilitator has had some similar experiences, I do understand. So um, we'll let them that's compare correct. notes and we'll ask tough questions and uh, maybe see who adapted better. No, just kidding. The following week, though, we are going to have evil goddess Kalala, or I think we just call her Kayla. She's and not she's the evil goddess. She's, she's the crafty queen. Well, I think at one time, though, she said something about being an evil goddess on her uh, Zoom s screen name, so I just assumed that uh, that was goddess, accurate. Goddess, but she didn't know. But no, she's not evil. Oh, oh, okay, just a goddess. Either way, she's decided to talk to us mortals and show us how to make homemade hamburger buns. So we're going to have that gods. in a couple weeks. <laughs> one of the gods. And what better to have um, to put on hamburger buns than hamburgers? And so we hope to have a uh, spider woman the following week weaving us a web of mushrooms and cloud pie. So I'm just going to pour now some salt. Because we're using this in a recipe, I don't have the little holes open in the salt shaker. I'm having it come out and don't want it to dump out either. It's still kind of a controlled thing. So I'm just pouring a little bit of salt here, mixing it with the chicken with my hands. So what I'm doing, I'm not actually using a spoon. I'm just using my hands to pour the salt and then just move the chicken around so that way it'll all get the salt. Okay, now the salt's wanting to come out, but we don't want to do too much at the same time either. So I'm going to stop there and now we're going to do our pepper. There's two ways I can do the pepper thing. Oops, something's falling. There is the pepper grinder, or we can use the actual pepper that comes in a plastic bottle with the holes in it, and that's what we're going to use. This stuff comes out more nicely, at least in the shaker that I have, so I'm just pouring it out and mixing, and we're going to do this again. Just kind of mix, mix, mix a little bit. Better be careful not to use too much, much of this stuff because I like it spicy, but uh, we don't want it too spicy. So there's that. Okay, now let us take a look at our cornstarch here. And this says a cup. I think I have enough for a cup. I think I also have a lid that is liking to fall, but um, we'll just set that aside and let's go grab our measuring cup. I was so happy and, and if I can borrow this to, um, I'm using the other set today, but it made my heart happy to know that somebody like me actually has the Braille measuring cups. And I'm assuming from the way Cindy described them, these are the ones like you would see at uh, Blind My Smart. So I'm trying to decide here, should I pour the cornstarch into a separate bowl and dip the chicken into that or just pour the cornstarch over the chicken? Bowl. Separable. Jesus. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we're going to do... You're supposed to dip it in that and then... Yes, um, and then the egg. Yep. Yeah. So, so we're going to do... want to make sure the... every piece is properly coated so it'll be easier to do it in separable. Yep. Okay. Actually, this container could use a little bit more, but I think we'll be able to make do with what we have. 
So I'm going to throw this container away. My cornstarch comes in a round container with a plastic lid, or rather came. It is now since uh, been fully used up. I'm going to get the excess off my hands. And then let's deal with our Ruby, eggs. You're breaking up quite a bit there with that water running. All right. I hopefully I'm there not breaking go. up now. Let's just get a, a bowl out for the eggs, and we just need two of them, and then we're going to beat them into submission. I mean, we're just going to beat them. And so for Tori, for this recipe, I'm assuming you also use an egg substitute, correct? I never use egg substitute. I don't use actual egg or, substitute. I use something instead of egg. It was clarifying because there are actual egg substitutes, which I do yes. not use. I, uh, you can use quite a few things because the point really is to dampen the um, stuff to make sure the cornstarch stays stuck. So you can just do it with water, which is actually what I'm doing. Or you could use milk, non-dairy or otherwise, depending on your reason for not having egg. So it would be one of those two options you'd want to go with. Like I said, I'm just using water because sweet and sour is something I do quite a bit. I know the whole point is to make sure that that cornstarch sticks. So water is fine. Well, we're going to try the egg method today, though I might be lazy in the future and just do water. We'll see. So I'm going to crack egg number one on the side of the bowl. But you don't have allergy I... reasons to avoid the egg, so... No. But, you know, another reason why people might want the water method is because, you know, if you're not good with cracking eggs, that could be another reason why you might prefer an alternative. Well, that's why I said the other option is yeah. about using milk, whatever milk you want. Because if it's just yeah. that you don't want to be cracking egg and you're doing chicken and you haven't got a dairy issue, you could even use regular milk. I wonder if you could use like the egg whites, you know, that come in the carton. I don't see why not. The point is to have something moist for... Uh, exactly. making sure stuff sticks. So. so yeah, you could, if you don't want to crack eggs, you could, you know, we've listed several alternatives, or if you have allergy reasons, of course, whatever your reason, you have multiple options, and that's why we do our best to explore them here on the call so you know what you can do. I just did two eggs. I cracked each egg. Kind of really, I like to crack it at the edge so that there's very little shell that I have to work with and I can just pour it out and then throw the thing away and that really decreases the possibility of shells being in your mixture and you can kind of tell because like I said if you do the extreme edge of the egg you've got mostly egg to work with and you'll have a much easier time that way so I'm going to get out my whisk and just beat and Just going to ten, kind of taking it around the bowl. There's only two eggs here, so not much liquid. But our goal is to try to get it liquidy enough. There's really no way to tell with your hands. I mean, you can kind of tell if there's any lumpy parts of the egg or whatever a little bit. But uh, you can just make sure you get around the edges of the bowl too. The stirring is, for me at least, it's one of the reasons why I think I don't like baking. Well, I know I don't like baking. Is because... The stirring to me is kind of one of those, even though I'm good spatially, it's one of those weird uh, spatial things I struggle with a little bit. Because it's like you're trying to use and a spoon. And if you're baking, you want to do cookies more than cakes because you can do those by hand. I, it's For me, it's third-party objects do not always give me a good sense of feel. And so that's why I, I'm not a big baking fan myself. Do I do it? I'll tell you guys, I've done more baking because of this call than for any other reason. Uh, a couple times to accommodate people or, you know, just to show you all different techniques. So I've done more baking as a result of this cooking call than I do as a general rule. So there you go. All right, before we get on to the oil, are there any questions? Jeanette? Good morning, Herbie. Um, Good I morning. just wanted to tell you that I have actually done this with egg substitute. And as long as you follow the directions as to whatever your substitute says. So like some say three tablespoons to an egg. Some say a quarter of a cup. As long as you put in the equivalent of the two eggs that you can dip into. You can't go wrong. 
and you'd be fine with it. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Jeanette. I don't use the egg substitutes because of personal preference, but that is very good to know. So while we've been taking questions, I've been uh, putting in the oil here into the pan. It says use a fourth cup canola oil. I just poured some in a pan and called it good. But if you want to do precise measurements, you can. So what we're going to do now is dip our chicken into the mixture. And I don't know if I mentioned this. Let's talk about the oven real quick. I don't know if I did or not. This actually says to heat it to 325, so that's a little bit below 350. I've not seen this before, but I guess if you have a digital oven and you can't control the temperature that easily, just cook it for less time on the higher temperature is what I would suggest. We've got three bowls here on the counter. Bowl number one, then mixing bowl. I probably didn't need such a big mixing bowl, but I wanted to make sure I had enough room to work with with the chicken. If and it's too big, I'm, too small. Exactly. I'm, and I'm going to use my other big mixing bowl for the sauce. After that, we're going to fry this and then set it aside and make the sauce. So I'm going to put chicken number one in the cornstarch, then in the egg, because that's what it says to do, not vice versa. We're going to plop in the pan, piece number two, and so on and so forth. So this is a pretty straightforward operation. You just lightly roll pieces in the cornstarch, you dunk them in the egg mixture, you place it in the pan. I am doing this with the pan not preheated because that'll just make it safer and that way everything will cook all at the same time. Me too. And I'm also taking out a few pieces at a time and dipping them in the cornstarch and the egg mixture and that way you can still coat them easily and you'll spend less time standing and doing repetitive work and so that is what we are doing so you're actually using the cornstarch for the tofu then yes all right the cornstarch helps the meat or meat substitute to crisp up slightly when you fry it yep. i do the same thing when i make sweet and sour when i'm not baking it and uh tori by the way also did make a very good uh, and i have to try this a very good sweet and sour tofu on the uh, cookathon we did a while back I'm going to have to try that at some point also this last Sunday, Courtney made a very uh, different stir fry to the one that uh, I did several weeks back with In the Kitchen with Courtney, and that one was streamed on Media 5, so I do know it will be replayed on there, so be on the lookout for that. She also does send out her recipe list if you are part of the ACB cooks she, list. And yeah, she has already sent out the recipe for that one. Herbie, okay, you want so to take a interesting. hand? Yeah, I will take a hand. Elizabeth, go ahead. I think it's possible with the tofu or the chicken to set your oven at 425 and instead of frying this, putting it on a grease cookie sheet and doing it that way, which has the advantage of starting it at a hot flame it, instead of the oil. So that's, that's another option. It is possible. Yeah. However, this way takes about three minutes. The other oh, way no, could... I understand. So, a lot longer. A, a yeah. good bit longer. And the trade-off is you use less oil and you don't have to flip as much. But actually, you do have to flip some. So anyway, yeah. so that's that's the story. If, it's if you it's another to, option. Yeah, if you want to avoid using the oil for whatever reason, then yeah, that is a way to do it. Oh, yeah. It will take longer. It will mean using the oven for longer, but it is an option, yes. And the and the effect is somewhat different, but it's just another option. Okay, yeah, thanks. It, it will have a slightly different texture yeah, too. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's definitely an option. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, guys, I've got enough chicken in the pan that we're going to get this done because I'm now running out of mixture. I will do something constructive with the leftover chicken in a little bit here as uh, we're going to get this stuff frying here. So I'm going to set it to medium. The idea is not to fry this all the way through. So let's see here. So I'm hoping now you'll actually hear it better. I don't know if you can hear the whirring fan or not. But that is my new wave. And uh, we've got it yes, we uh, going. Hear it. We can hear it. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so we're going to need four tablespoons ketchup. 
distilled white vinegar. I didn't know there was any other kind. Well, I guess there, maybe there's a difference between there's white vinegar and distilled kind white of vinegar. vinegar. I know there's a lot of kind of vinegar, but there are two types of white vinegar. All right. Well, we have white vinegar. Hopefully, it doesn't matter too much. No, I don't. Because the because the vinegar comes with, in big bottles. It doesn't matter with the sweet and sour sauce I usually make, which vinegar it just specifies vinegar. And I've used apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, red wine vinegar, rice wine vinegar, and they've all worked. So. All right. So then we're also going to need a tablespoon soy sauce and a teaspoon of garlic salt. So pretty straightforward recipe. Now let's see if I can find the other mixing bowl that I was wanting. I'm wanting, still need plenty of pots and pans, but there it's not. Okay, that's my pie dish. That will not work as a mixing bowl. Let's open this side of the cupboard. Where, oh, where did my mixing bowl go? Well, there it is. Yay. You start singing and amazingly things happen. Let me tell you, works like a charm every time. Uh, they'll, they'll never let me on the karaoke for good reasons because uh, things that uh, happen. I yeah, think yes, okay. The, you think I should go on karaoke? Well, I think what we'll do instead is my ketchup. How about that? Um, for now. Actually, the ironic thing. Now, first of all, I am on karaoke. I stream it now. So we're go I've got my two tablespoon measure here, which really comes in handy for something that requires four tablespoons. So I'm going to do two healthy two teaspoon things, a little bit extra, uh, not much, just to make sure we get enough. And the ketchup is going to be combined with other ingredients, so we're not going to really taste the ketchup now let's get my bottle of vinegar out this is an interesting bottle because it looks a lot like a soda bottle and these big water bottles the one way you can tell a difference one the side at least of this particular bottle has um like little groove things on it and then the bottom does not have legs that will at least tell you it's not a soda bottle as the bottoms of those have like those five leg thingies but uh I don't even know if they're what they're meant to be truthfully but that's what they look like to me we need a half cup of this and we're going to get out my measuring cups where is my measuring there it is there it is and again we're going to pour it over the bowl because extra is not going to kill us in the, this instance unless you have an allergy to vinegar of course in that case you shouldn't be using it in the first place so just pouring that into the bowl and making sure there's going to be no drippage here before we put the vinegar lid back on. It's just your typical plastic lid. If you were just to feel the top of this, you'd think it was a soda bottle. So I would highly advise that you really feel the bottle before, you know, just taking a big swig out of it because otherwise you're going to be in for a surprise and probably not a pleasant one. And to answer the question, no, I have actually not done that. So, yeah, I don't think that you should do that. Definitely. No, but I'm not. I'm, you, no. Okay, soy sauce, soy sauce. Now I just remembered I did not get out my soy sauce earlier, but I know I have some. At least I should have some. Okay, that's not soy sauce. Ooh, I got hot sauce. We could use that instead, but uh, no, no. Not for this. Okay. I, 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 all right, I'll do that. Well, I did have soy sauce. Let's see. There's one other place that could have gotten to. Otherwise, we'll go to. Up oh, there it is. And um, how can I tell this is soy sauce? Well, actually, I think I know. I'm just kind of guessing here. This has a plastic film on it. The bottle is kind of a funny shaped bottle and I really should scan this before I open it, but it's a bottle I'll be using anyway for something, so. Okay, when the plastic film does not want to come off for whatever reason, that is where we will take a sharp knife and kind of pierce the lid. Okay, this does not actually smell like soy sauce. First thing I need to do though is slightly stir the chicken. 
um, because we don't really want it sticking. There we go. Okay, I can tell with how this is looking. I'm going to need a little bit more oil than what I gave it. Alright, fine. I really don't like to add an oil after the fact, but um, this is sticking. And so I need mean, it's either that or it's going to get burnt. And um, just going to add in a tiny bit of oil. Thankfully, though, we're not cooking on a high heat, so I've got a little bit more uh, leeway to work with here. And then we're going to kind of just stir this, kind of get the pieces coated evenly. Come on. There we go. And um, I'm just trying to make sure that... Uh, Things are evenly distributed. I think this new wave is not the greatest pan for this recipe, but now we're getting some things to unstick um, here. Just working at it slightly here. Okay. I think my other problem is maybe I got a bit over enthusiastic with the chicken, so. No, it's just what happens. Bit more than the only problem with the coating, I mean, the coating is great for helping it become crispy, but it's terrible for making it stick to the pan. Yes. So it's not your fault. That's good. All right. So I'm going to add in, I think, just a little bit more oil. We're going to turn this up because it's kind of crisping and kind of not. But this is the uh, this is definitely the challenging part of frying and. This is why I was not precise with the oil measurements because I had a feeling it would need more than what it actually calls for. So we're going to add in a little bit more. And then we're going to stir one more time and kind of evenly distribute stuff. And then we're going to turn the heat up a little bit higher. But uh, And so when stuff sticks to the pan, you know, I just kind of try to really scrape the bottom to get it unstuck and to get the stuff moving around here. And um, that's what I try to do. Do we have any questions? You do have hands raised. All right. Let's get to you then. Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen, Welcome. Hey, okay. Now, how is it you're able to stir when it's on a new wave? I mean, the dome thing um, is the, where the plug is, so how can you lift that up while it's still cooking? So mine is not a dome. This is an actual burner. So that you, you set the pan on. So it's an open uh, thing. It's not a... Oh, uh, they have an open... They, that's a model I hadn't seen. Yep, this is an open burner. It's just a flat burner that you set your pan on, and that's how, that's why I'm able to stir. So, okay. All right. Um, Peggy Ann. Peggy Ann. Yes, I um, was wondering. Did I thought I saw on there? Maybe you haven't got to it yet, but I thought I saw um, sugar. Did I miss that? Or? He just hasn't done it yet. Mm. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something. <laughs> yeah, he, he hasn't done it yet, that's all. Hey, right. thank Because I'm cooking along and I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> so thank you. He stopped to sort the chicken, so he hasn't done it yet. Mm. Yep. So we're going to do three-fourth cup sugar. And... Um, so yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second. So I should have, I really should have done it first, actually, but uh, that's okay. As long as it gets in there. And actually, I did mine last. Because so. I yep. always, I just did it that way. So. I always find that if you, that 
although they often put the dry ingredients first, sometimes if you put the wet stuff in first, the dry stuff doesn't stick to the bowl quite as much. Mm hmm All right, do we have any other hands? Not right now. Very good. Okay. So I'm just going to double check to use my voice stream scanner here to make sure this is indeed soy sauce. That is a bunch of gobbledygook. Oh, this is my horseradish. Okay. Just well you checked. Uh, yeah, it is a kind of a good thing gonna say that does not seem like soy sauce so that's where you have to use your uh, senses to engage okay so we're gonna put this in the fridge and uh, we'll get to that later I do have uses for you the good news is I do know where I do have soy sauce and here it is okay and this is kind of in an interesting bottle too um, not quite like a soda bottle but uh, it's a lot has much like a much thinner uh, neck I'm gonna check on the chicken here and um, so I don't want to leave this for unattended for too long uh, is this is one of those recipes yeah that's what I'm thinking too okay so it's kind of uh, it's like it's cooked it probably could get a little bit crispier is what I'm hoping for but uh, and if you yeah it should, it'll in theory, it'll crisp a little more in the oven since you've started the process. Yeah, and it did say not to cook all the way through, so... Yeah. And this is a recipe that I just might have to uh, experiment with a few times, even if I'm the only one eating it, to uh, see how things go. Okay, guys, so, believe it or not, we've actually wasted a lot of time here today. Who knew? So, a tablespoon of soy sauce is what this calls for. And I'm going to pour that into the tablespoon, get a little bit of extra there, that's fine. And we're going to deal with that. Okay, three-fourth cups sugar. No honey honey, just the uh, sugar. And then we're going to need some garlic salt, and then we will have us a mixture that we can pour over the chicken. So. Let us get out my actual three-fourths cup here. If you do not have the Blind My Smart set, then you can just use a fourth cup three times. But uh, why do that when you can do one three-fourth cup one time? So I've got my sugar container here. Again, I prefer to store my sugar in a container that it's a lot easier to work with. And I'm going to scoop out. And we're going to pour into the bowl. This is, of course, a lot of sugar, but uh, that's how these things work. Also, and I don't know if she's still on here, but uh, Liz, who we heard from earlier, runs a very important call for Braille learners and Braille teachers. The Braille room call tonight at 6 Eastern time. So uh, 3 Pacific and who knows what mountain and all that good stuff. Somewhere. I think mountain's on our time zone currently. Or uh, the Pacific time zone. It would be 11 my time. 11 UK time. Well, we have at least three people who do call into these calls from the UK. I'm thinking of yourself, Sandra, and Pooja. So um, there might be people that do care. And it would be 4 mountain time. I know that because that's the time zone my husband's family is on in Canada. All right. Very good. So for Mountain. But anyway, come to that call to find out what it's about. Also, unmute. And right after that, one of my favorites. Maybe I'm biased because I'm hosting it as well. But Games to Play with Lady A. With Lucy. Oops, I forgot the garlic salt. I was stirring this stuff here. So it calls for a teaspoon of garlic salt. Where is my garlic salt? Where, oh, where can it be with its tail too short? Wait a minute, what's that got to do with garlic salt? Oh, it's a different song. Yeah, you're right. You sure you want me on karaoke? Okay. I didn't say that you should. I said you could come on karaoke. I could. 
Okay, that, that, I'm glad we got that cleared up. All right. Okay, I'm going to take the colander thing off of this. This garlic salt comes in a round bottle. I happen to was able to get the spray labeled last year, which really comes in handy in quickly identifying it. And I'm going to add a little bit extra because we like garlic. You know how real garlic would do in this recipe. True enough. So I'm just going to stir this all up. Again, I have it in a large enough mixing bowl that it's going to blend together. And then we're going to put this in the oven. So let's see, what other calls are there happening today? I think we have uh, the Latin call. There's a and, crafting uh, bowl if you want to make a yarn dog. Yeah, all right. And if you don't have the, if you don't like the real dog, why don't you make a yarn dog? And, uh, you know, oh, that's good. Well, you know, Geppetto didn't think that his wooden boy would become a real boy, and look what happened. And, you know, so I'm, I'm not sure yes, how he much wanted comfort. It to become, but he wanted it to become a real boy, though. That's the difference. True. If you just want yours to just be a yarn dog, then you should be fine. All right. Okay, so we've got us a pretty good sauce here, and nope, I can honestly say I don't really taste the ketchup. No, you probably taste the vinegar no. more than anything. I'm going to taste the soy sauce more than anything. But... Alright, so now we're going to bake this, and I'm going to get out my baking pan that does a lot to cook things a little bit quicker. We're going to... Grease it. I know we shouldn't use the spray thingies, but we are using so Pam. Mm -hmm. It is still the easiest stuff to work with, and you might ha come to a horrible ending one day, but at least your life was easier in the process. So, so I'm going to hey, now you might come to a horrible ending chicken. one day anyway, so even if you don't use it. Exactly. So you know what? I'm going to make sure we don't get any, get any excess oil. So I'm going to drain the chicken over a colander. That way we can just pour it into a pan. And that will make life a lot easier. And now I can see there's a little bit of coating left in the pan. Maybe we'll try to get that off. I don't know. But uh, we're just shaking here. And um, next week, and uh, just some stuff to expect. Oh, so first of all, this other call is happening. This Thursday, the Mac call is happening again. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back with more Mac. And so I'm going to be talking to be about... Mm. Oh, there is that too, isn't there? And that's actually before your call, so there. It is. So it, the way it works is you get free to be you, and then you get the Vespero presentation, which I don't know what it is they'll be talking about, but I should know because I'm hosting it. And then you get the Mac call afterwards. And so, then after um, that, you can come and needle knitting if you desire. And then uh, Thursday Nightcap, where you can definitely have some interesting things happen on there. I know from experience, hosted by Mr. Diane. So, a lot of great stuff, but anyway, in the Matt call is going to mention, I'll be demoing the Messages app, and how you can, you know, basically actually do messaging right there from your computer, and I'll talk about why you would want to, and... Um, all that good stuff. So that is this Thursday. I'm now just pouring the sweet and sour sauce over the chicken. And then, yeah, we're not going to need to bake this for an entire hour, but... Mm. But I can tell this is really going to work well together. So... So I suggest once you've got that in the oven, you start thinking about your rice. I've been thinking about it. 
I don't think I need a break. No, just kidding. Do you have a um, hand-raised turby if you would like to take it? All right, I would. Annette? So when you're pouring your chicken into the into the colander to get some of the grease off, is it has it already been turned off and cooled down before you do that? Mm. In this case, there wasn't much. Uh, the the new wave kind of cools things a little bit quicker, but yes, I had it off for a couple minutes, and um, I do like to let the oil cool. Yeah, it before. is a good idea to leave it for a couple minutes if you can. So, is mm -hmm. is the new wave pan? Is it hot when you pour it over? I mean, you have to hold the pan. Is it hot when you pour it over the kiln, the kiln, the cylinder thing? So the pan has handle has a handle on it. Okay. Um, just like you would expect from any other pan, and the pans specifically that I have have like a really long handle. Okay. And so, um, how that works is that uh, okay. Hey Google, set timer for twenty minutes. All right, twenty minutes starting now. So, um, how it works is the pan, like mine, it has a really, really long handle. So mm -hmm. you can, you, I, I, what I, I, so what I do is I grab the pan handle and I take it over to the sink and I use the, I'll try to like have the bottom of the pan lined up with the colander. So that way I can just, okay. um, mm -hmm. pour over. The other thing that you need to know that's different with the new wave versus an actual stove burner the new wave cools quicker. So when you leave a pan on the stove, it mm -hmm. is a lot, um, it takes a lot longer to cool off than the new wave does. So and that then is- And that's gas. The, the new wave is yeah. two parts. You have a burner and you have a pan. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. You're welcome. You to get me one of those. Very interesting. I think you do. Yes, indeed. So um, that's the advantage with that. All right. Um, like I said, if I you're know using it on the stove top, then if you're using a gas one, it's going to cool quicker than if you're using electric. Yep. So we're coming up on the part where I will be willing to take other recipes, ideas, and all that type of stuff. So if you're eager to share that, just hold off for a few more minutes. We've got to do the rice. First of all, do we now is the time, though, if you have any questions about the recipe so far. Um, any more hands? Not at this time. What did you pre you pre you preheated the oven to three twenty five? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Jill, all Jill right. Just raised her hand. Hello. Yeah. Um, are Hello. you heating up the sauce first, like in a saucepan, or are you no. gonna no. put put it on room temperature? I poured it. I just poured it, I stirred it, and then I poured it over the chicken. And then oh, it's all okay. baked together. But if you were doing it that you're cook, uh, cooking the chicken or whatever you're using um, all the way through in the frying pan, then you would want to heat up the sauce in the saucepan and then put them together for the last couple of minutes in the pot, uh, pot or frying pan. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you were putting the sauce in the oven. I thought you were pouring it on no. to take it out. No, okay. pour, pouring it on the chicken to go in the oven. Okay. All right. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. Anybody else? Not at this time, but you know, the second I say that. <laughs> yep. Well, that's why we pause a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to do rice. So let's talk about rice. The reason why this is so hard to cook is the water can absorb very quickly, and especially because we're going to be using brown rice, so that makes it even more absorbent. That's the rice comes in a more water than they normally recommend. Yep. So I think what the normal thinking is like two cups of water for one cup of rice. No, the normal thinking is a, is a cup and a half of water to one cup of rice. So I told you to round it up to two. Yeah. I think I 
Well, I know I, I actually do agree with that. So we're going to get my two cup measuring cup here and we're going to turn on the sink. And I like to use filtered water because it does taste better, but uh, you can use whatever. It's gonna boil anyway, so. Well, I think I forgot to mention with the pan, I was very pleased though um, we'll see how this turns out. It was really more of some of the coating that stuck to the pan, not the chicken itself. So that is a good thing, at least. All right, we're going to set this cup aside because I have a horrible feeling I'm going to need it again before too long. And um, I should go look at the instructions again. So, Tori, do you add your rice in before you get the water to boiling or afterwards? I add it in before because of the um, fact it's easier than trying to put rice into boiling water. Yes. I totally, totally agree. A lot of things, recipes will tell you, I'll put it in after it's boiling, but if you can do it before like we're going to do, you'll have a lot easier time. The other recipes so also I've got tell you to make it uh, to allow it to simmer longer than we're going to because of the fact they're assuming you've only just put it in when the water started boiling. Yep. So we're pouring the rice into the cup here, trying not to make a mess. I made a small opening. Ugh, the messy part is turning the bag back to its normal uh, way after putting in the cup. Okay. You know what, I'm going to store this bag into a Ziploc first, so that way we will have less mess, because what can happen is I could set it down thinking, oh, I'll get to it later, and just to have me accidentally knock the bag over and then I have a that spill that I have to work with, that would not be good, so I'm Maybe going to store this. No. Um, there's still a few dripping to the floor, but not as bad as it could be. So, you know, just tiny little ones. So we're, that can be picked up with the vacuum a little bit later on or washcloth or mopping, whatever. So I'm now storing this in the Ziploc and we're going to set that in my pantry here. Now we're going to take our rice that's in the cup here and I've got the pot with the water over the stove, so I'm just pouring it in there, okay? And now we're going to turn the stove ring on to high, and we'll let it boil before taking it down to low. So, with that, now we will take questions on rice, and then we will go on to... Uh, so first of all, does anybody have any questions about either the recipe so far or the rice? I want to start with those. All right, well, not hearing any hands, or rather not hearing my host say we have hands. We're going to move on then to uh, now, if you have any recipes you'd like to share, I don't know if uh, Spider Woman, if you're still on here, but you had an interesting recipe you'd like to share, and I think that you're earning the nickname of Recipe Woman, which is a good thing. Or if anybody has anything Sorry, else. I had to get to my unmute button. <laughs> no, that's okay, that's okay. All right, so I you have... had an interesting chicken recipe. Yes, um, you do the same kind of thing, but instead of the cubes, you strip them. And then you use um, sour cream with some salt and pepper in it. And then you um, crush up um, like stovetop stuffing mix and you roll them in that mm -hmm. and you bake them. Interesting. Interesting. They, we did try it. It does actually come out really good. Well, when All I get your right. email address properly, you'll have to send her a copy. Oh, yeah. I got a bunch of yep. them that um, me and you were talking about and a couple more that I thought of, and that's one of them. So, uh, Heidi, I got to ask, have you thought about starting your own cooking call? 
No. Because a lot of the ones I like to do are (laughs) non-cooking. I like to do, like, no-bake and refrigerator-type ones. But, you know. Well, I would actually say that that's all the more reason for you to do a call because they're, you know, I think it's good to offer different things. And so... Yeah, yours like would Courtney's definitely recipes be. These are different to ours, and Janine's are different again. Yep. Yep. And so we'll I could we later. could have a non-cooking call about cooking. Well, it's I'm just giving you ideas. If you're interested, yep. I can definitely get you though the uh, facilitator link, and uh, you can uh, you could actually start your own uh, non-cooking cooking call. We'll talk know. later, but yeah. All right. Well, it, it's up to you. Um, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, coming, I'm encouraging you to start your own call. All right? I'll give you advice, but it's ultimately your uh, your your call that uh, you'd be doing. So, I mean, well, we're going to have you as a guest star on this call coming up. So that that is my advice. All right. Well, thank you, Heidi. And if anybody else has any comments or if you'd like to see the no cooking cooking call or Anything like that, uh, now is a good time, or if you want to just say hi. And, uh, or if you have any cooking questions in general, where this is now more of a bit of a free-for-all. So, wave those hands in the air, and uh, we will get to you. Again. Again, welcome again. Hi, I like the idea of a non-cooking cooking call. Um, partly because we, what would be a good idea, at least I think, is I is a excuse me, sorry. I had to do an online order for my shopping this past weekend, and I had so much difficulty in doing it that it took hours it would be nice to have a call on how to do the shopping online since a lot of people do shop online um so that's kind of a non-cooking cooking call (laughs) um yeah when we when she was saying non-cooking she meant the kinds of stuff that you don't actually have to bake like um that stuff you just put together and put it in the fridge and that kind of thing is what she meant by non-cooking okay um, although that is an interesting thing to have a discussion about at some point, though, yes. Okay. So I, I have... Def- that's okay. I have definitely... some, But I'm really glad you brought this up. So now my... Uh, first of all, real quick, I think you can hear my uh, rice. Yep. Bubbling. All right. So you think... Now take it down to a simmer. Yep. All right. Um... See, guys, what you're witnessing here is, I mean, I, 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 I can cook rice, but it's been a long time. So, you know, you get to see me following instructions here. So, you get to see and for Tori, this, yeah, exactly. Um, I've, you know, both Cindy and Tori have been getting to tell me what to do lately. I'm letting them have too much fun. You no, know, it's so much fun. Um, so anyway, in October, I will do a cooking call devoted to online shopping. Um, I am on the lookout, by the way. Oh, I do need to turn on my kitchen fan. It's getting a little bit smoky because I've not used it in over a year because I honestly don't care for the service that much. Um, I'm more familiar now with Walmart and Amazon Grocery. So if there are any Instacart or shipped users that would like to participate in the call come October, please. You do? I know. Yes, uh, Patty uses Instacart all the time, and if I asked her, I know she'd do it. All right. Very good. So then we will ask Patty, because she's not really been on this call much. So, all right. Tori and Patty from Free to Be Me. And uh, it'll also be interesting, because uh, I think, you know, for the first time, we'll, we can, if Tori's able to, she can talk a little bit about what it's like to shop online from a UK experience. So, um which is probably the same as over here. Maybe not. I don't know. I've never, no, uh, there are differences. On... All right. So it was, it's going to be an educational as well as uh, entertaining call there. So we're going to plan on that in the first week of October. 
So you'll get an idea of how I do the shopping and the good and the bad about online shopping, that whole type of thing. So I do intend to do a call on that. So mark that on your calendars. I do actually have some more kitchen projects in mind though. Um, coming up, um, like I said, we're supposed to have our guest speaker next week. And then the following week, it's going to be Kayla Law. Then the following week after that, to Spider Woman, aka Heidi. Then the following week, by request, chocolate chip crunch cookies. And uh, this recipe comes to us courtesy of the chocolate chip cookie murder by Joanne Fluke. First book so, in the Hannah Swenson um, mystery series, if you're interested. Yep. And I actually think I did read that one a long time ago, though. Um, back when I lived in Minnesota. So um, another catering cook you can also read though. I don't know if I'd ever do her recipes on any of these calls because she is a true caterer is the Goldilocks um, catering series by Diane Mott Davidson. And um, there is definitely a lot of uh, really good books in that series and uh you know she's a caterer and a mystery solver at the same time and sometimes the murders happen at the events she's catering so okay to make sure i remember text me the name of that book and author please i will Sorry. it's a series but i'll get you the yeah, yeah. name um and i'll get you the first book in that series to get you started with so right. um but a lot of emotional baggage in that book, those series too, just to warn you about. Um, but it's a very fascinating That's fine. Um, thing. But and she has a she, she has a lot of creative titles like "Dying for Chocolate," "The Main Corpse," "The uh, Whole Enchilada." So um, I think Joanne Fluke was probably influenced by her because um, probably because um, she Diane has creative Fluke. titles like that too. Yeah, because Diane the first book goes back to the late '80s, so. Um, very good. So be sure to check that out and I'll get you the information for that, Tori, and we can talk more about that on Free to Be Me as well. Okay. Anybody else? This is your chance to say hi. So take full Action advantage of it. Yeah. We'll keep going otherwise. <laughs> See, I thought they'd take the opportunity just for that. <laughs> Maybe they like hearing it. Do we even have anybody left? Uh, I've not looked, so. Yeah, there's people. Abraham has okay. his hand raised. There you go. All right, somebody who's willing to brave. Go ahead, <laughs> I, Abraham. I just want to say that I really enjoyed uh, the Hannah Swainson series uh, that uh, Joanne Fluke wrote. I read that. Uh, I read all the uh, the books so far in that series. Awesome. Well, we read it for the first. Uh, we read the first one for the ACB Crafters Book Club last month. And okay. That's how I was introduced to it, and I'm definitely going to be reading the rest of the series. It's really good. Um, It'll be really and, fun. Uh, I'd also Go be ahead. In that other series that you mentioned. Be. Okay. So it is the. Let's see if I can. So the author is Diane Mott Davidson. And here, I'll, for those, you can always email me through community at acb.org for if you no, want this written easier. down. Or come to free to be me on Thursday when he can be able to give you the details. Okay, what time yeah, is free? But I'm going to... Uh, uh, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. And, and it okay. runs until free Eastern and you can pop in at any time. Okay. Right after the Braille call, as a matter of fact. Okay. Oh, okay. uh, yes. Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Jonathan, welcome. Hello, Harry. Hello, Tori. When are you making Hello. that talk? Uh, the fourth week in September. Okay. Can you use it in a toaster oven? Um, take it. Are you talking about a toaster oven with the slots or like an actual yeah. oven oven? With a slot. No, Harry. not the one no. with the slots. Slot. Okay. I'm just curious about that. So, no, those are meant for toast and things like that, not for toast baking. Toast and bagels and that kind of thing. I'm talking about the toast oven. 
Okay, so not the one with the slots, the other kind. Yes. Then potentially, but you'd have to adjust cooking times to adjust for the using different appliance. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, so real quick, guys, because this is food related. So the series, um, the author is Diane, D-I-A-N-E, Mott, M-O-T-T, Davidson, D-A-V-I-D-S-O-M. And the first book in the series is Catering to Nobody. So there you go. Um, but we'll talk more about that on Free to Be Me on Thursday, like we said. And uh, I won't be hosting it, so now I get to have fun. And I hope my friend Pierre is on there, too, because I've got a book to see if he's read or to recommend to him as well, since he likes nuclear bombs and all that Pierre type of stuff. Pierre's there most weeks. Sometimes he hides under his yep. rock until I make him come out of hiding. But Well, just don't let me forget that I got a present for him on Thursday, so, um, which I probably Maybe that'll be a anyway. way to encourage him out from under his rock. <laughs> Maybe. I, you know, the, 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 the bad thing about hosting is you really have to behave yourself sometimes. And so I really had to. So last week. I know. Um, and you were such anyway, a <laughs> I know. And for my treat, nobody bakes me the treat, so I have to make them myself. Um, anyway. Well, I sent you and the that recipe. Was my, what more do you want? Well, you to make it as well. You can come over here. Um, yeah, sure. I will just be there in about five minutes. Sure. All right. Sounds good. Hey, Google, stop. Well, we talked about the things we want in the from science fiction books, and I talked about Farcasters, which is a teleportation device. Um, I mean, the Star Trek transporters are, have their own advantages. I just don't know if I want to be dematerialized. That's the only no, I don't disadvantage. I don't really. Yeah. I. I, just um, I, I yeah. I'd, I'd want the transporters more for a situation where I needed to be rescued from somewhere um, yeah. that I couldn't get out of physically. That, that's what I'd want them for myself. Anyway, I'm going to Once now take a look at this chicken and flip it. Day. Once you've made your teleportation device, I will come and bake you some cookies or something. All right, sounds good. So we're just going to kind of flip the chicken here. I really... This is the part I was really not looking forward to because all the chicken, of course, is in cubes. You know, I wonder um, if anybody has any thoughts on this. Could you, instead of cutting the chicken ahead of time, could you fry it up in, you know, like the breast or thigh form and then cook it so it would be easier to flip and then... You could, um, but then it would need the it. hour. Well, I mean, it says it needs the hour anyway, but if the, if the hour is the only disadvantage, you'd at least have less prep time. So you, in a sense, it would kind sure. of make up for itself. Uh, it might hey, Google, even need a bit more than the hour. Set timer yeah. for 10, 20 minutes. All right, 20 minutes. And we're starting now. Side note, if you need an alarm in this room in the morning, I can do that too. Okay. Just say, set an alarm for 7 a.m. Okay. Hey, Google. <laughs> Volume. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah, you could technically. It, you just have to allow for the fact that it'll take it longer to cook. Okay. So, I guess that's my, it can be a question of what matters to you more prep time. But it would certainly... The other thing you'd have to keep in mind, though, with the prep time is letting it cool down so you could cut it. Um, so, that would be yeah. the other disadvantage. But I did use a double spatula to flip everything. And, you know, I've been so busy chatting with you guys, I've not been checking on the rice, so I do have it on a low water. Let us stir it. Okay, it's still pretty watery, actually. Yeah, it should be still um, pretty watery, but it shouldn't be too much longer before it's actually cooked. Right. I think the pan's got off the burner a little bit, though, so that's part of my problem right now. Having to fix that. All right. Do you? Uh, I don't know. I thought about trying to season the rice a little bit with like some garlic powder. Um, you can, if you want to. You can, at this point, while it's finishing off, put something in the water to season it. Yep. We'll just try to get a little bit of flavor. Um, no. I don't need to because I'm actually using jasmine rice. They've already done the work for me. Right. But yeah, that would be an option. Okay. 
There it is, found some more cornstarch. Not that I need it right this second, but uh, I actually could make another batch of sweet and sour chicken then. All right. Except now my garlic powder disappeared. Herbie, you have Maybe. a hand raised if you'd like to take it. All right, I would like to take it. Thank you. Yes. Chanel? Um, Chanel. Is it okay to talk about other recipes and things or just wait? It is okay to talk, okay about, to other talk about other recipes. Well, I just want to say that on Bookshare, there is the Lake Eden cookbook with all of the Hannah Swenson recipes. Mm. And Herbie and Tori, I have downloaded the document, the Word Docs file. And I wish each recipe was a heading, but unfortunately it's not. Um, so you kind of have to do a bit of find and search and all that. But I did put in both of your folders the ginger Regency ginger crisps, which I want, and the chocolate chip crunch cookies. So um, I copied the individual oh. recipes for those. So there you go. Awesome. Thank you. And I did ending, the early. Diane Mott Savinson was the series I uh, did tell you about before, Tori, but now he's given you the. I couldn't remember the. I author, remembered that so. you say it was saying yeah. about in that one. That's why when, when he's saying about it, I'm like, please give me the details. <laughs> yeah. I, I Okay. So I may have to get back into that one again. But as you said, there is a lot of baggage and stuff. So I the, don't know. The one thing I will say, I mean, I, uh, granted, I've only read the first book. I would, you know, but at least my impression just from the first book is that Joanne Fluke is a little bit lighter reading than the uh, Goldilocks series. But they're... I would agree with that. Um, agree the with Goldilocks that. series, though, is definitely, especially the way they end can definitely be very intense as well and very you know it, it, it's still good reading don't get me wrong but um very good um all right but i wonder chanel have you did you try the xml version and convert it to html and see if that had headings okay there are headings in the book but the recipes are not headings so they have not properly tagged all of okay. it. I can certainly try the XML. I have no problem doing that, but I feel like it would be a waste of time because there are often books where you think there should be headings right. and there aren't. So, All makes right. Sense. Well, very good. So it does make sense. So it sounds like there's a whole cookbook we can draw from for recipes alone from Joanne Fluke. Going to have to write the author. Maybe, ooh, I wonder, I wonder if that would intrigue her. Hey, we, we're doing a blind... Uh, cooking call and we're trying some of your uh, recipes uh, you, you want to come on and talk about hmm. oh boy um she we, we can keep dreaming can't we um yeah sure hey so the writing I looks like wonders stop. they might they might have the ability to get that pulled off hmm. I, I, I need to talk with them you know hey it would um, be really cool if we could they take it author requests from people, any author that you'd like to see. So they, they do take requests. Well, Nobody's requested. Right. Well, I can at least... Oh, well, okay, then we need to, we need to do that. I'll, I'll uh, make sure that uh, they do that. Um, we need to get Tori on there. You know, homegrown talent, too, so... Well, she was an author before. She was part of the community, to, to be fair. So, but uh, all right. Well, I, I mean, I mean, there's uh, yeah, and you're no longer doing free to be me on Friday, so you could show up. Okay, before we continue babbling on, do we have any other hands? Heidi. Heidi. I actually have made a couple of Joanne Fluke's um, recipes. And um, one of them, I will never do a turkey the same way again. Oh boy! Okay. Which one? So, 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 so okay. Um, that sounds interesting. Um, something to try. Now for, I'm uh, really yeah. intrigued about that one because um, I haven't gotten to the point where there's a turkey recipe. Yeah. Me either. Interesting. Thanks, are you? All right. Anybody else? Mm, no, sir. All right. You know, I wonder if, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't be engaging the host I know here, but, you know, I was just thinking, I wonder, uh, you know, since uh, Sheila puts together the uh, recipe swap documents, you know, would that uh, count her as an author, you know? Uh, hmm. Um. 
granted it's not original writing, I suppose that'd be the uh, disadvantage, but, uh... Yeah, I, I don't think... I mean, it's a great thing that she does, and we're all very grateful for the recipes when we get them. Um, but I don't think it quite counts. The definition of an author is to um, have your work published where anyone can buy it. Mm. Alright, well I tried. Mine, is, mine so. is not writing. Mine is mine is taking Compiling. everybody's information and listening to the recipes and putting it all together and editing and making sure the spelling is as correct as I can make it and then sending it out. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you can right. compile the information and edit it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I will quit engaging the host now. I'm doing bad practices here, but uh, um, just waiting for the rice to cook. I think I may have turned the, the, or the low for the stove may have actually been more like an off, so I had to turn the water up a little bit, but uh, at least it's at a low enough temperature where it's not going to be splattering at me like a certain macaroni pasta did several weeks ago so so it looks like we'll be making uh, crunchy chocolate chip cookies and ginger crisps so uh That's glad to know that we have some because i was told too so yeah I'm, I'm glad i have some so now i know what we're doing through the first couple of weeks of october and peggy uh Ann what we'll do after that again, all right peggy Ann. um okay i have a non-related cooking question but um All right. the group the email um to get like the recipes and stuff i know there is a problem with that Do we have to subscribe to a different listserv um if you were not moved across automatically and have not been receiving stuff then you need to email community at acb.org and ask them to put you on the cooking list okay thank you it should have migrated everyone across, and it does not appear to have done so. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't always received stuff, so I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, well, I, I know that it didn't move me, and when I was realizing I wasn't getting stuff, I contacted community, and Colby put me on the list. So I suggest you do that just to make sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so very good. Um, all right, so I found my garlic powder. It was kind of buried, so now I just stirred in a little bit here to the rice. And um, we were boiling so nicely earlier. All right, I'm going to have to put you on medium at least. Well, medium low for now. And that'll get you cooking a little bit more yes i talk to my food and uh you only want to worry if it, it goes doesn't back. yeah thankfully it's not done that yet so far so you're fine then otherwise yeah I i'd like to point out that if my food starts to what we're talking back i'm not eating it no uh so well i guess you're not a, <clears throat> a meat eater but you know when you've eaten the cow and the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy that uh, told you what parts of it were uh, delicious you know uh. this is one of the reasons i don't have i don't eat meat <laughs> um it's not the main reason but it it's kind of a contributing factor um <laughs> i don't like the idea that my food could talk to me uh well i think i would but uh yeah anyway <laughs> um yeah, but you're weird so Exactly. Very good. Do we have anybody else? He says hopefully. No, no hands. <laughs> no, okay. They're not going to save you right now. <laughs> They're not going to save me. Okay. Well, well so just I'm just... Uh, that <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So we're just uh, cooking here. The rice is slowly heating up once again. The stove is being really interesting today because I'm using the stove for the rice and I used the new wave for the um, chicken earlier. So I do use both. Somebody had asked me the other day 
Was there an advantage to just, just like using an electric skillet versus a stove top? And for me, I'd say use them interchangeably because the stove gives you a lot more flexibility in what pots and pans you can actually use depending on how you want to cook things. For instance, you want a pot for things like rice or corn or anything that you're boiling, but you want a pan for more for like frying or whatever. And um, an electric skillet does not give you that flexibility. Also, you know, if you like different but size you, frying pans, like I... You can, Go ahead. Get, you can get something that is just an electric version of the ring, which you can then put a pot on. Yes. So that's an option if you'd rather not be working with a stove top um, and want to use something like that. Mm hmm So, yep, you definitely can do that. And there are electric pots out there as well. There's even rice cookers, which I have one. I just didn't uh, feel like uh, really bringing it out. Not when you could have me tell you how to make you rice. Exactly. Um, so we're just uh, looking at the rice here and uh, we're gonna let the chicken cook a little bit more. I definitely think we're not gonna need the entire hour that it calls for. And then we're going to serve it over the rice. And I forget, I don't think we need to actually drain the rice, do we? It depends on if there's any water left um, when it's right. finished. In theory, no, because in theory when it's done, there's not really going to be any water left. Um, and there should only be like drops at most when it's done. So in theory you won't need to, but if it seems to be done and there's still water, then you will need to drain that. Yeah. Now, another kind of rice that would definitely be interesting to do, and I will have to do it on one of these calls because I've never done it before, is a fried rice. Yeah, that is fun to do. And you can make egg fried so rice and I'll I make tofu fried rice. Alright, sounds good. The egg is just used for the binding and stuff, so you can yep. then add things like chicken or whatever to it. Yep. So that is something else we'll look into for a future call. All right, we got some stuff planned out for you guys. So, we and do um, some at the end of October. Ooh, that might be scary, but I could do. No, hmm. like savory pumpkin pasties or something like that. There you go. I got a recipe. Oh, um, I was thinking I think... about pumpkin pie originally. All right. Oh, well, then give me that. Yeah, give me we that can recipe. do both. We can do one one week and one the other. Yep. I mean, there's Thanksgiving coming up as well. Exactly. Now, I was thinking about Thanksgiving and uh, doing a uh, Thanksgiving dinner right here on the cooking call. Though it wouldn't be on Thanksgiving, it would be a different the day. Because I'm assuming before. that we'll... The Tuesday before, yeah. Because I'm assuming we're going to have our Thanksgiving-a-thon. Well, it's not an a thon, but our Thanksgiving marathon call like we did last year. Friendsgiving, yes. Okay. So I set it on high again just to get the water really going and now we're going to turn it back down now that it's bubbling. And that bubbling sound is very useful to know when the uh, thing is uh, boiling. Here I'm going to turn the fan off so you can hear the bubbling easier. Bubble, bubble, okay. And exactly. Same sound we had when I did like the steak and mashed potatoes a few weeks ago and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, can I get a time check? We told you no You chance. have 14 minutes. All right. Good, good, good. So we actually did use the entire two hours of this particular call today. Um, our next ones will probably at least have an hour and a half for the hamburger buns. I'm guessing, just to be on the safe side. Uh, the other, two, but, the, uh, the the one that Heidi's doing probably won't need more than the hour. Yep. Not unless we're waiting for and, long enough to be able to taste uh, to cook the burgers. 
Well, it wouldn't be so bad if we could just like send it over Zoom to everybody, but uh, um. Do also, nothing, let's right? see. Okay. So go ahead and unmute. Sue? Hello. There you are. Mm -hmm. oh. There you are. Good morning, everyone. Um, you, you're... I have to really behave now. This is my mother, by the way, folks. So, Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. You're cooking rice without a lid. Yep, I'm just stirring it. No, 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 no. And Tori didn't tell me to use a lid. You, you no. have to because... It's... You don't have to. Well, I never use the lid. Right. Really? When you use the lid as a blind person, when you remove it, you then end up um, with the steam and with it being a problem for your hand. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, normally, yes, you would use the lid, um, but for it's one of the adaptations I made with not being able to see. My husband usually uses the lid. I don't because I found that when I do, um, I end up... Um, having issues with the steam so i just don't bother oh, anymore yeah I, I understand that that makes but do you do you find that when you cook the rice um you have to double the time then because you don't use the lid no oh okay i will try it your way as well then <laughs> Although I do, I do use a little bit wa more water than, uh, and also I think because we put, uh, I also put the rice in before the water's boiling. Yes. Yeah. Um, that might make a difference as well because I know a lot of people tend to put the water, in, the rice in after the water starts boiling. Okay. Right. Um, and I think that that makes a difference because uh, where we've left it in there while we waited for the water to boil. Um, it's been in the water longer to start with. Yes, yeah, that yes, I understand. Yeah, okay, I'll give that an I'll give that a try. Thank you. And hello, Herbie's mum Sue. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely to hear you talk, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, you don't want to tell her what you said about Birmingham accents once? Okay, never mind. Um, <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tori said it, not me, but uh, something about not liking Birmingham accents. And, I didn't uh, say I didn't like them. I just, and actually, what I said that I didn't like was London accents. So there. Um, okay. I just, I so. just said that they were not like a lot of the British accents that you that you are stereotyping. Is what I actually said about Birmingham accents. So there. Yeah, okay, yes, which is very true. Yep, yeah, people do not know that there's a lot of British dialects out there. Um, Liverpool has its own dialect, you know, where the Beatles come from. Um, but the other thing I was going to just say, I think for now we've made history on this call. I mean, I well, granted, I don't know who, who you know, listens to this, uh, whatever, but we may have uh, actually taught a sighted person how to cook differently, so for the first time I've... And, uh, yeah, that is a very good point about the lid, though, that it can... Google, stop. Hey, Google, stop. Okay. So, uh, as I'm talking to devices here, we're going to check on the chicken while the rice is cooking. Um, that is definitely an interesting point about the lid that, uh, yeah, you do sometimes have to deal with the uh, steam factor, which is not always... Um, ooh, this is hot. I may have overcooked it. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, we're going to let that cool down. And now, what did I do with my spoon? I set it down. Oh, there it is. Trying to feel around with an oven mitt is not fun. So we're going to um, take a look at this rice a little bit here. While the chicken is cooling down. It's definitely cooking. Mm, mm hmm Okay, it's definitely um, cooking. And the disadvantage with brown rice is it is a little bit of a harder texture than the white rice. So it is sometimes makes it a little bit harder to gauge. Now we're going to see if we can sample our chicken with a fork. 
since I know everybody is dying to know how it turned out and so am I so I'm just going to nab a piece any oh yeah there we go okay hmm okay so yeah the I'm glad I did not cook it for the entire hour that it suggested that would have been way way too much time even the 40 minutes I gave it I think was definitely a bit too much so I could have probably really done this in about half an hour instead and uh, it would have turned out can I say you just told fine, you so, so now or later mm. well oh wait I just said it now mm-hmm Herbie, you're down to about six minutes since Heidi has her hand raised. All right, Heidi, I think you'll be our last. Um, one of the things that I know with um, lids when I do use them is I usually will point them back towards the wall of the um, behind the stove before I take them off. So that way I don't get a steam back. Right. Definitely, that is a certainly way of doing it. And um, all I can say, Tori, is at least that's why I took everybody's advice and didn't do it for the actual hour that it called for. So, um, but all right, very good tip there, Heidi. So yeah, you can point the lid away from you, and uh, of course you do have to worry about steam getting on the wall. And I would worry about a little bit, you know, would that cause some damage over time? But uh, it yeah, that's just yeah, one of the hazards of cooking there. It shouldn't do. Not if you've got decent tiling around back there, but depends on the quality of your kitchen tiles, I suppose. It does. I don't know about our apartment if it would work or not, but uh, it's something I have done, though. So, all right, guys. We're going to wrap things up here. The chicken did turn out good, even if it was a tad bit overcooked. And um, we'll have it over rice in a little bit. So, like I said, some other great calls today, guys. We hope you will all join them. Unmute. Games to play with Lady A. We got the Braille call. We got crafty calls. We've got quite a few other calls that I'm not mentioning, just not because I don't like them, just because I can't remember them all. I think we have French and, oh, yes, NVDA. There's a lot of great calls. There's 99 calls happening this week. Get on that community yeah. list and go on them. Exactly. And... We expect to see you all there. So, um, Some of them will be streamed, some of them will not. So um, that's just how these things uh, work. So thank you, uh, Deb, for streaming. Thank you, uh, Sheila, for hosting. Thank you, Tori, for co-facilitating. Thank you, everybody else, for uh, listening and or participating. I appreciate every single one of you. And thank you, Toby, um, too. Because, oh, yes, th thank you to me for uh, doing this, but it's, you know, for you guys, I do this for, um, if it wasn't for you guys, I would Everything not Everything you do, here. you do it for them. Exactly. You know, it's true. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, no, if I only got like two or three people, I do not, I would not be motivated to do this call every week the way I've been doing it. Cause for those of, you know, I used to only do this every other week, but because of demand, I increased it. So it is. I know, because isn't it strange that everyone was demanding to hear you more? I know. I find that very surprising myself. So. so I get to hear me later on when I edit this. And with that, thank you, everybody. Sheila, whenever you are ready, you may end the room. All right. Thank you, guys.